I like to dedicate this homily to a very dear friend of mine, Ellen McAdam, who died last week, two days to her hundred and first birthday. <laughs> Ellen was a special woman. Between 2002 and 2007, while I lived and worked in Peterborough Diocese in Ontario, Canada, Ellen was my anchor. She was my family. And she was a special friend. Now, how did Elena and I become friends? I was working at the Cathedral of St. Peter in Chains in Peterborough, and Ellen was a parishioner there. So one day after Mass, I was greeting people at the back, and she waited until I had greeted everyone. She called me aside and corrected some of my pronunciation. I thanked her with so much gratitude, and that moved her. Ellen was an English teacher before she retired, and she was teaching migrants in Toronto. So she helped people to improve their accent, and so she helped me as well. And after that interaction, she also invited me over for lunch. I went. And I stayed for four hours. So after I had left her house, Ellen called her best friend, Sister Mary, who was the principal of her school while they were still teaching in Toronto, to say, I invited this priest from Africa for lunch. And he stayed for four hours. I was actually about to ask him, Father, when are you going to go home? Sister Mary said to Ellen, that priest is lonely. Take care of him. And she saw that as an inspiration from God to literally take care of me. And so she said to me, you don't have a family here. I like to be your family. I like to be your mother. I said to her, no, my mom is still living. If you want to be my Canadian mother, you should first get permission from my mother. And she did. She wrote a letter to my mother. Ellen helped me. She supported my education. Without her, probably, I am not sure I could have finished some of my studies in both Canada and the United Kingdom. So when, in 2011, I became a professor and Ellen was there, she told me, my son, Father Stan, I think I can now go back to the Lord because I have fulfilled the mission that God gave me at this later part of my life. She was 90 then, and I said to her, wait until you are 100 before you leave. I guess she did wait. This week, I'll be in Peterborough to bury Ellen. And as I reflect on her life and the readings today, the question that comes to my mind is, what is the meaning of life? Each and every one of us, we must answer that question. What are you pouring your life on? What are the things driving your choices in life? What values do you embody? Like the seven brothers 
in the first reading. What are you willing to die for? Now, like the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the scribes, as we heard in the gospel today, we might make philosophical and theological arguments about what happens to us when we die. Is there a resurrection? Already in the book of Maccabees, we begin to see, even in the Old Testament, intimations, signs, symbols pointing to the full revelation of the mystery of the resurrection through the death, resurrection, and the ascension of the Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. But for us believers, God has given us a mission to do here on earth. The truth is that what happens after death is being defined every day by what is happening now. What are you? spending your time here on earth doing. The Lord Jesus assures us that in my father's house there are many mansions. When I go, I prepare a place for you. And when I have made a, a place ready for you, I will come and take you to myself so that where I am, my servants will also be. He says elsewhere, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, even if he dies, will live again. And the one who dies believing in me will live forever. So our Christian faith teaches us that friendship began here on earth with God does not die when our lives are over because it is friendship with God who is eternal. But just like St. Paul says that the eyes have not seen, never has it entered the mind of anybody what God has prepared for those who love him. So the truth is that we do not know how things will end. The choices that we make today will only define for us where we spend eternity. And so the invitation from us is for us to live a good life. Live a life of love, a life of faith, a life of sacrifice, a life consumed with a passion to do good for others, to place yourself always behind others and to place others first like Jesus. That is the life that Ellen lived. She loved her family. She loved her friends. She loved strangers like me. And she loved the church. And she loved God. This weekend, Pope Francis is spending time in Bahrain, an 86-year-old on wheelchair, going, going to where his heart moves him because that's what God invites him to do at this time, to build bridges, to create better relationship between people across religions, across nationality, holding everyone together. Because that's what God called him to do. What is God calling you to do? Each and every one of us must take up every day the task of spending our lives here bearing witness to something greater than each and every one of us. And that is love. Love without counting the cost. Love until it pains. Loving God sacrificing for what you believe. This month, November, we remember all the dead. My heart goes out to all of you who have lost loved ones like me with the loss of Ellen. And I pray that Ellen McAdam, that her soul, her beautiful soul, her giant spirit 
and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God. Rest in peace. Amen.